Like, how did it work out that you were the one working with him? Like, did his agent reach out to you? Like, how does that work? Yeah. So, you know how this sort of this thing goes. These college players are done. And most of them either have an agent or they're getting an agent or whatever. And, and those agents all have a plan for them, right? Uh, sometimes that plan is, hey, you're just going to stay at your college and work out with your college strength coach. Um, a lot of them have these plans. If you're going to go to Arizona, you're going to go to Texas, you're going to go to Florida, wherever it might be uh, to train with you know these guys to get you faster. Because it's all about what's your 40 speed at the combine. And so you sort of become like a track athlete for, for a little while. Um, and you know, Will, uh, my friend, Will Hewlett, he's a throwing coach and, and there's, there's plenty of those around the country too. And he and I have worked together in the past, uh, Ian book the year before I, I worked with Ian book as a junior in college and he was in a senior. Um, I really like l working with those kids who have spent four years in college and you just, it's incredible what they don't know. It's incredible what they don't know. I, I I'm telling you, Ross, uh, uh, what what college quarterbacks don't know and however college offenses work they get to the nfl and it's sort of mind-blowing for them and it doesn't take more i had a teammate ryan harklaw he was a teammate you, you would know he, he was he was undrafted like you are year didn't make the team but he said in the first two days in jacksonville training camp with tom coughlin he learned more probably than he learned in four years of college right so as you know there's like these big jumps sometimes depending on who your college coaches are uh to the National Football League. And, um, you know, obviously I had work, I think working with the will, of course, it was just a natural thing. So yeah, the agent contacts us and said, Hey, would you like to work with Brock, you know, uh, throw some money your way. But honestly, I, I wanted to work with him anyway. I had worked with Brock, I don't know, before COVID, but he and I, anytime there's a starting quarterback at Iowa State, I see, I try to try to at some point develop a little relationship with them and then go have some meeting time with them. Like, hey, do you want to spend three or four hours watching NFL film? And of course they love it. Now it's different than what they're used to and how they see the game. But I think any time you can learn information about maybe how a coverage might work or how, yeah, it looks like cover four now, but this guy over here is telling you that this safety over here to the right is going to come down. So you actually, you can anticipate it's going to be cover three, right? And there's all these little tips that, of course, veteran guys like myself have just acquired over the years. And the more I can pass down that knowledge to these young guys, it's for me, it's uh, it, it, it's extremely enjoyable. What is it you said, you know, because I know you played for a bunch of teams before you played and, and in a bunch of systems before you played with Gary Kubiak and Kyle Shanahan in Houston. What is it that you that they taught you? Like what? How did they? Because yeah. I didn't play for them. So what? What is it that they taught you that was so phenomenal? That's a good question. I think of all the things, coverage-wise, Kyle was so good about giving you a deeper understanding of how defenses, how their coverages work. Like the really, really precise details of what's going on in cover four. Right. Uh, you know, whose responsibility is who, uh, what the safety's looking at, what their eyes are looking at, because he sat in meetings with Monty Kiffin. I, it actually goes back to this. Kyle Shanahan, when he was with Tampa and Gruden, when he first get, came into the league, he had to sit in a lot of meetings or worked with Monty Kiffin uh, sometime when he was there. And when you do that from an offensive perspective, you actually get to see exactly the words the, the eyes, the, the thought processes of all what the defense is, whether it's cover three, man, whatever it might be, you know. And there's so many types of man, right? And um, But yeah, he had all that, that knowledge was so valuable uh, to all of us. That's number one. I feel I really understood how coverages work, again, so I can anticipate uh, uh, even more. Um, the running game mixed with the bootleg and play action. The running game mixed with the bootleg and play action. That is a game changer for a quarterback. If you look at all the stats, uh, play action passes or bootleg passes, they take the 32nd best quarterback and the first best, the best quarterback, Pat Mahomes, and right, they make them actually fairly equal because the the the, the play action itself usually gets the player open. And you don't have, as a quarterback, you don't have to fit balls around these windows 
uh, where linebackers and safeties are just dropping back into some designed cover to pre prevent you from having a completion or prevent you from throwing the ball deep. This this style of offense forces the defense to play all the gaps. And it doesn't matter if you get a yard or three yards on a lot of runs. All right. Because if you're getting two yards, which, you know, back in the days, you know, four yards is like, that's a good run. If you get two yards on a run and you run outside zone, you are forcing the defense to play every gap from the center to the sideline. They all have to be in the precise location to stop that run. Okay. Um, if they're, if they're in those gaps, they're not in their pass drops. Okay. So you can, and, and the action looks the same. The action looks the same and it, it, it's extended from the center to the running back. That action is what a second and a half or something like that. The shotgun token fake, that's like a half a second. So since the action is longer, the defense plays those gaps longer which allows a couple of things. One, the receivers to get further down the field to actually throw the ball deep. As you know, the hardest thing to do in the National Football League is to drop back pass and just throw it deep, right? You got as a left tackle, you got to hold on uh, for your dear life. Play action, you just get to come off and smash into a three technique and run them down. And, and, and he's going to keep that. He's going to keep that gap. Why? Because his job in the running game is to keep that gap. So another thing it's doing is it's not allowing the defenses to rush the passer. They have to play the run. So all those stud defensive ends and stud uh, tackles, uh, they are not up the field pressure trying to get to the quarterback. They are stopping the run first. So it forces those guys to, to uh, do a different responsibility as well. But then again, yeah, the time uh, it, it allows you as, as a quarterback. And then the protection a lot of times is really, really good. Uh, because the line sort of makes a fence as they go down the line. And, and the, again, the defense has to play the run. As you know, you're a good play action team. You'll see him back there 10 yards deep like nobody around him or, or, or in a bootleg, nobody around him. That's why bootlegs are so great because you get out there and it's like, wait, I actually have time to think and see out here uh, or possibly run, uh, right? So there's just so much, um, it's just so hard on a defense, I think, uh, to do those things. The, the world sort of went to this RPO game, which I get it. There's, I, I think RPOs are, are good where they are. There's a spot for them, but it, it, it makes it hard maybe on one player, right? There's like, oh, there's players in consternation, but it doesn't make it hard on everybody. And the game then is just sort of like here and it's not sideline to sideline uh, as far as, you know, forcing defensive linemen, everybody to run sideline to sideline. So I, I just think that it's Kirk Cousins is 10 and two. And Kirk Cousins, he, he's not he's not a great quarterback. He you, you, these top five guys, he doesn't he's right, but but it allows him to just do his job and be successful. And if you look at a, an average Vikings game, for example, thirty passes. Kirk Cousins throws thirty passes. Half of them would be play actions or bootlegs. Half. So I think you're 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 an offensive lineman. I only really have to pass block fifteen times. Like per sounds set. good to me. Sounds good to you. I bet they have the other 15, four screens, whether it's a wide receiver screen or a play action tight end screen. Those are the great ones. Or you got a tight end on a Daniil Hunter or some great defensive end out there. And yet you want him to get beat. Perfect. We'll throw a screen to, to our to our tight end. They'll See, be four just so or five. You, know, you you just you just earned yourself. Not that you had to. We're gonna have a much longer conversation in the offseason. Yeah. This yeah. was phenomenal.